In this section, we'll be exploring the contemporary contours of race and looking at how this plays out in terms of racism. Race is a relatively recent concept. Really, we can think about it as really emerging with the expansion of the European empires about 500 years ago. In this lecture, I'll be discussing race and biological anthropology, race as a persistent social concept, the AAA statement on race, looking specifically as a response to it claims that race was associated with intel intelligence, comparing race in the U.S. and Nicaragua, and finally concluding with a brief discussion of some of the differences and similarities or connections between the idea of race and ethnicity. But the main point of this will be that race is not the same as ethnicity. Biological anthropology really began as an attempt to classify all the world's populations into different races. When we think about the idea of race, race is a human population category whose boundaries allegedly correspond to distinct sets of biological attributes. Hence, racism can be thought about as the systematic oppression of one or more socially defined races by another socially defined race that is justified in terms of the supposed inherent biological superiority of the rulers and the supposed inherent biological inferiority of those they rule. In other words, we have things like the idea of the white man's burden. The white man is the one, or the white race, is as the superior race to the black race in terms of an inherent biological superiority. Whites are biologically superior to blacks would be the line of thinking. Uh, here and uh, uh, the idea of racism. And we have this emerging in biological anthropology very early in the, in the history of biological anthropology with a number of scientists who go in and they measure the cranial capacity as well as the brain size of the so-called different races. And they do this by taking people who they believe to be from one race or another race and measuring their cranial capacity. And not surprisingly, during these studies, they find that the, the race, the white race, is superior. Now, these studies were both done in both England as well as the U.S., and the interesting thing is they have the same sort of alignment, except for the U.S. race, race scientists, biological anthropologists at the time, they, they determined that the U.S. or Americans have the largest cranial capacities, whereas the English determined that the British are the ones that have the a largest cranial capacities. A lot of this was uh, attacked in anthropology by Franz Boas amongst others. Uh, Franz Boas is known in anthropology as uh, for starting the first U.S. anthropology department and he really looked at notions of human biology and culture in attempts to debunk racist stereotypes. After World War II, Washburn rejected the race-based physical anthropology that had preceded him in the 19th and 20th centuries, finding that human population genetics has shown that different human populations from all over the world share basically the same range of genotypic variation, no matter how different they may appear phenotypically, hence reinforcing the position that the concept of race is biologically meaningless. And when we think about race in the U.S., we often think in terms of skin color. Hence, people with darker pigment, pigmented skin are often referred to as black. Uh, lighter skin, white. Uh, and in the U.S., it's really along this, this racial geography, if you will, of, of black and white. And this tends to get complicated uh, quite a bit in U.S. history as you start to see more and more migrants from uh, different parts of the world. But when we think about the idea of skin color, it certainly is a persistent idea that skin color makes race. And uh, if we look at this one trait of skin color, we can see that it is geographically distributed differently. However, skin color does not correspond to a number of other biological traits. Hence, when we think about this in, in terms of biology and biological anthropology, we have the notion of Klein's. And Klein's are uh, the gradual intergradation of genetic variation from population to population. And this is within a single trait. Uh, that is, it's, not, it's very difficult to see um, 
where you, all of a sudden you have uh, a, a, cha a very dramatic change in skin color of a particular group. Uh, not to mention the fact that now we have uh, with globalization a lot more mixing, a lot more moving around of people uh, living in different regions, a lot more uh, a lot more marriage outside of uh, communities where people were born in. Uh, the other th important thing to keep in mind that this is a single trait. Again, not it's not a group of traits together. So Klein's only look at the notion of sing a single trait. And the Klein for skin color is based on melanins or pigments in the skin. And basically there are two Klein's which are operating in terms of human skin color. First, you have darker skin at the equator uh, and this is done in order to protect against uh, UV radiation and you have lighter skin at the poles uh, and the lighter skin at the, the poles would favor uh, vitamin D production. Of course we're seeing all sorts of changes with in, uh, fortification of foods uh, and these sorts of things today. Although race has been debunked uh, as a biological reality by anthropologists, uh, it remains a very persistent concept and idea and we still see a lot of medical research which talks about this notion of race as being uh, biologically real. At the same time, race is also very much socially persistent and it can be used in a number of different contexts. A book by Hernstein and Murray called The Bell Curve, which subtitled The Intelligence and Class Structure in American Life, really looked at intelligence as largely inherited, offering genetic explanations for the reasons why certain people were more intelligent than another, uh, making the claims that uh, this had genet the genetic reasons why uh, whites scored higher than blacks on uh, SAT standardized tests and these sorts of things. Uh, at the, on the other hand, the, the notion of race is utilized in advocacy positions as well. It's used in terms of political stru struggles of those who are marginalized both politically as well as economically. And so it helps people to form a collective identity or imagined sense of community uh, as well as in struggles uh, against environmental racism which is the citing of uh, high level, uh, high, high polluting industries, chemical production factories and whatnot. Uh, in uh, in communities of color. So this idea of race has been used towards multiple ends both inside the academic world uh, as well as in, in activist circles as, as well. In response to the bell curve put out in 1994, the American Anthropological Association reacted at its annual meeting putting out a statement uh, on race and intelligence and I'm going to go ahead and go through it here. You can also see it in the text, but the American Anthropological Association, or AAA, is deeply concerned by recent public discussions which imply that intelligence is biologically determined by race. Repeatedly challenged by scientists, nevertheless, these ideas continue to be advanced. Such discussions distract public and scholarly attention from and diminish support for the collective challenge to ensure equal opportunities for all people regardless of ethnicity or phenotypic variation. Earlier AAA resolutions against racism have spoken to this concern. The AAA further resolves, whereas all human beings are members of one species, Homo sapiens, and whereas differentiating species into biologically defined races has proven meaningless and unscientific as a way of explaining variation, whether in intelligence or other traits. Therefore, the American Anthropological Association urges the Academy, our political leaders, and our communities to affirm, without distraction by mistaken claims of racially determined intelligence, the common stake in assuring equal opportunity in respecting diversity and in securing a harmonious quality of life for all people. Again, uh, if we think about the notion of race, it really does have its roots from European colonial activities in the Americas as well as the transatlantic uh, slave trade in Africans in the 15th century. The beginnings of the global racial order were developed by the end of the 19th century when European colonies established rule over the territories abroad. 
theories theories uh, regarding divisions of human races in, into uh, races defined by phenotypic appearance and common features believed to be shared by all within the specific uh, race, such as uh, language and intelligence. And so you have the emergence of the races of mankind, where you have uh, white northern Europeans and darker-skinned indigenous in inhabitants of Asia and the Americas and Africas, uh, Africans, of course, uh, at the lowest rank. Uh, European thinkers created classifications of humans bracketed into these mutually exclusive racial categories uh, emphasizing blackness at the bottom. Racism was based on imagined communities uh, are, as there are no major biological discontinuities within the human species. Uh, race is a, a culturally constructed concept, a uh, criteria developed to describe a social group which gets uh, imagined as biological reality. So in the U.S., we have multiple understandings of whiteness, and this is along the lines of class difference. So um, we have white individuals who are considered to be trash. We have, uh, in the U.S. South, uh, white trash or trailer trash uh, designations. Uh, there are also multiple understandings of blackness. Um, in Haiti, uh, this is based on descent, whether an individual is, uh, is directly descended from freed slaves and, and mulattoes or French fathers. Uh, this distinction is not recognized by outsiders, however it is recognized within Haiti. Uh, within the U.S., you also see a racial divide between white and black, which is further complicated by new immigrants, the so-called brown, Hispanic, Latino, Latina, and yellow Asian uh, racial categories. Uh, if we think about this in, the, in a cross-cultural perspective, too, we can see that the U.S. racial uh, ideas of race in the U.S. are uh, specific to the U.S. Uh, Lancaster, in 1992, sc studied uh, this notion of colorism in Nicaragua, where he looked at mestizo, mixed European and indigenous majority, and indigenous mosquitoes and African-Caribbean minorities, Afro-Caribbean minorities of the Atlantic coast. And what Lancaster found was that Matizos see these groups as backward, inferior, and dangerous. Um, also, uh, these groups were of a, an opposing political faction, the Contras, uh, as opposed to the Mestizos, Sandinistas. Uh, and so colorism, as Lancaster defines it, is a system of social identities negotiated situationally along a t continuum of skin colors between black and white. And Lancaster found that there were three color classifications. The phenotypic uh, system of blanco, uh, white, moreno, brown, negro, black, which described the skin tones of Nicaraguan mestizos. The polite system of European is chile, a Mayan word for blue eyes, and marinos is blanco, and negros is morenos. Uh, it's polite rather than a phenotypic system utilized to speak about someone in their presence. And then you have a pejorative, uh, or what Lancaster refers to as an affectionate system of Chile, uh, fair skin and lighter hair, uh, and negro, darker skin and darker hair, which is used uh, as an insult or uh, affectionately uh, in informal close company. And so what Lancaster finds is that uh, whiteness is seen as a desired quality in Nicaragua. Uh, a person a person can be white in one in one given situation. Uh, it can be addressed as blanco in the company of people who are darker skinned, though their claim to whiteness changes when in the presence of someone else with lighter skin. So in this particular context, racial solidarity is difficult because within the non-white category, there are distinct identities, Africanos, Indios, and the lower class mestizos. Um, which uh, form their own identity groups uh, with their own sets of racial separateness. And in talking about race, uh, we, we come to the idea of ethnicity because what we often see is the conflation of these ideas of race and ethnicity. And race and ethnicity are not the same thing. When we think about ethnicity, ethni ethnicity can be thought about as a principle of social classification used to create groups based on selected cultural features such as language, religion, or dress. 
Ethnic consciousness develops as members of different groups try to make sense of the material constraints they experience. And in the context of ethnicity, there's a real struggle between self-ascription as well and other ascription. Self-ascription involves insiders' efforts to define their own, their own identity, who they are as a group of people. Uh, other ascription, where you have outsiders defining particular identities. And the Komarov's work, they look at the subordinate groups uh, turned into classes due to losing control of the means of production by the ruling class. When dominant ethnic groups stress their cultural superiority, perhaps in protecting privilege uh, from subordinate groups, ethnicity can then become racialized. And so you have racialized ethnic groups and these class stereotypes among Irish, Jews, and Italians in the U.S. This can also be reversed. In the United States, the Irish became less stigmatized, um, though it is argued that the Irish were successful at this, because they accepted the racialization of African Americans. And in Web Werbner's work in uh, Britain, he, he, he found, uh, Werbner found out that to, define, to properly define ethnic violence, everyday ethnic identifications need to be distinguished from racism. And so he came up with these ideas of objectification and reification. Objectification is the intentional construction of a collective public identity producing everyday or normal ethnicity. And reification, uh, this is a key, key idea here, is a form of negative racial or ethnic absolutism that encourages the violent elimination of targeted groups and is central to the practice of racism. Ethnic confrontation that becomes violent is, can be transformed um, into a form of racism. And so as you're going through each one of the articles designated for this week, Clarence Gravely gives an excellent background in talking about the re relationship of society to race and to biology and really unpacks some of these ideas about race overall. Peggy McIntosh is a feminist anthropologist who often writes about the idea of male privilege. However, she unpacks her own knapsack here and looks at her privilege in terms of being white. And so she looks at this idea of white privilege and all of the aspects of uh, what white privilege means. Uh, there's a number of contemporary articles which have looked at uh, the rise of multiculturalism, uh, in the uh, recent, uh, relatively recent election of uh, President Barack Obama, and uh, Anita Waters' piece uh, where she l examines the descent of white man uh, and race and gender in the context of uh, human evolution uh, exhibits. Uh, so in conclusion, in this lecture, I've tried to convey to you the connections, the early connections between biological anthropology and the race-making uh, process that really starts to, uh, when you start bringing science into the fold of the, in the history of race uh, emerging 500 years ago with the expansion of Europe, uh, and, and now with the biological anthropologists rising and providing uh, their sci so-called scientific data uh, about things like intelligence and cranial capacity. And this idea is not, is not quite dead, this, the connections between racism and uh, uh, and this notion of race and intelligence. And uh, we saw that with the publication of the bell curve and the very quick reaction of uh, the American Anthropological Association through their statement on race. Uh, race is also uh, perceived quite differently in different cultural settings. In the U.S., uh, historically, we've had a, a white-black relationship where if you have uh, any uh, percentage of black, uh, then you're considered to be black or classified as black. Um, any sort of ancestry that would be black. And th the key, too, to, to think about race and to start to try to conceptualize race and what it is, is that race is not the same thing as ethnicity, although uh, ethnic groups can become racialized.